Hi, my name is Sim Ann, and I was developed and made by the Laredal Company. It is a pleasure meeting each of you. I want you to communicate with me just like you would your patients. Even though you may not see me respond to everything you do, please know I am very sensitive and my computer senses everything you say and do to me. Today my name is Mrs. Oliver and I am a patient at CSM Hospital. I am waiting for the nurse to come in and then we're going to show you around the lab. Come in. Good morning, Mrs. Oliver. My name's Mary. I'm, I'm going to be your student nurse today. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. Good. Listen, I'm going to show you around the lab before we get started. Okay. okay. Sure. As there is no sink available, always be sure to use the alcohol-based hand cleanser, as you would in the hospital, before and after each patient use. Okay, now let's take a look at the beds. They're electric. Mm-hmm. The tight adjustment is on the outside of the top rail. Oh, that's great. Now, on the inside of the rail, you can see the head and foot adjustment. Can you put my head up a little bit so I can see all of you? Sure. Is that comfortable? That's great. Good. The bed is currently locked in place. To move the bed, you must use the foot pedal at the foot. Green is to steer, red is locked. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. All right, that's great. All right, now let's take a look at the med and treatment card. Everything you need for your simulation is included in the med card. You have a drug handbook, medications, syringes, and any appropriate treatment kit. You have several medications in that top drawer. What kind of things do you have in there, Mary? Well, I see heparin. I see insulin. Are I there see. different concentrations? There are. I see here that I have some Bumex that's 0.3 milligrams per milliliter, and then I also have Bumex that is 0.6 milligrams per milliliter. So I need to be very careful when I'm drawing up meds that I understand the concentration of my drugs. That's excellent. Okay. Let's come on over to the bed, and I want you to take a look at the head wall above the bed. It works great. There's a timer on the side of the unit. Turn that on. Okay, we're on. Okay, the suction works. You see that the things there can be intermittent, and what's the other one? Continuous. Oh, okay. When might you, would you use intermittent suction? Um, intermittent suction might be used if a person had an NG tube into suction. Okay, and what would you use continuous for? Well, if we needed to suction someone's mouth or nasopharyngeal suctioning or tracheal suctioning. Oh, that's great. All right, then we have the oxygen flow meter. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm feeling just a tad short of breath. Oh, okay. Could you please um, put me on a little bit of oxygen? Sure, I can put you on oxygen at two liters with a nasal cannula. Oh, that'll be great. Could you put that nasal cannula around the, just put that around the back of my head. It seems to work better. Now, your ears don't hold the nasal cannula very well, Mrs. Oliver. Good. That's at two liters, right? That's at two liters. Do you feel a little bit better? Yes, I do. That's okay. Good. Could you also show the other students how to work the non rebreather mask? Sure. <laughs> now we have two oxygen setups in here. So you're going to hook that non rebreather mask up to the other oxygen outlet where that Christmas tree is. Now, are you turning that all the way up this time? I turn this all the way up as fast as it can go, and we know that the non-rebreather mask is working when the oxygen reservoir bag is full. Okay, so that works too. It does, and when this reservoir bag is full, the patient will be getting 100% oxygen. That's great, okay, thank you for that. All right, now I'm gonna take a look at the touch screen monitor. 
first thing I'd like you to do is just touch that green heart rate. Oh, so what is my heart rate? Your heart rate right now is 81. And what is uh, my rhythm? Well, your rhythm is normal sinus rhythm. Okay. And what is the yellow? The yellow is for um, an oxygen saturation monitor, and we have a pulse oximeter, just like you would use in a healthcare facility. And Mrs. Oliver, when I put this on your finger, it will just start automatically and tell me about your oxygen saturation level. Oh, that sounded different too. It did sound different. So now I know that your oxygen saturation is 99%. Okay, and then right under that, there's an AWRR. Mm -hmm. And that's your respiratory rate. And your respiratory rate and heart rate, I can read from the monitor, but I can also count your respirations by placing my hand on your chest because you breathe just like a normal person. It's great. Okay, now how about my blood pressure? Well, I can take your blood pressure one of two ways. There's a special blood pressure cuff that's used in the simulation lab, but it has a blood pressure gauge on it. And so I can take a blood pressure manually. Make sure the line for the artery is lined up where it should be on your patient. Inflate the cuff. And then deflate and we can hear the blood pressure sounds come in, just like on a real patient. The other way that we can take blood pressures once the cuff is on the simulator is to touch here where it says NBP manual and then you get a start stop menu hit start and then hit this little X to get that off the screen and then you can hear the cuff blow up you don't actually see it blow up but it sounds like a blood pressure cuff blowing up like on a Dynamap and then you'll see the blood pressure start to count down here as it's calculating what Mrs. Oliver's blood pressure is and then in a minute, the numbers will come up here that will tell you the patient's systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Mrs. Oliver, your blood pressure this morning is 125 over 82. Okay, that's, that's a good blood pressure for me, but there's another number on that screen, a 97 right there? 97, this is a mean arterial blood pressure, and that's a pressure that, that we learn to monitor later on in the nursing program. It's sort of like an average between your systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Okay, all right, now let's a look at some of my special parts. Okay. Now you put the blood pressure cuff on my left arm. I did. My right arm, what does that do? Your right arm is the arm that's used for IV access and so you see Mrs. Oliver has an IV in her arm and we actually will infuse IV fluids into the mannequins. Mrs. Oliver has some other tubes that come out of the top of her arm and really that's just part of the simulator that allows us to make sure that there's a blood supply in her arm for if we draw blood or start IVs. Alright, so while you're talking about that IV arm, can you go over and show them a little bit about the IV pump that sure. we have here? This is the Horizon IV pump which is the same as the pump that's used at Savista Hospital and we have um, real IV fluids that run into the pump and the pump goes into her arm and the first number that you see here is the rate in milliliters per hour. The second number that you see is the volume to be infused. And we can change these during simulations if we need to. For example, if the doctor ordered that the IV rate be increased to 50 milliliters per hour. To change the rate, you press the hold button. And then we just use the plus and minus signs to increase the fluid rate. And now it's at 50 milliliters per hour. And then we hit the button primary run and now the IVs will be infusing at 50 milliliters per hour. Oh, well, that's a pretty simple pump. Huh? It is. Mm -hmm. Now the other two campuses have pumps that match the hospitals that they work with. They do. Okay. All right, now we'll go over a few other things. Now, you had mentioned here that that fluid is actually infusing into the patient. It is. Okay, so nothing in here is pretend. Nothing in here is pretend. If you're supposed to give a medicine, give IV fluids, insert a Foley, then we expect you to really do those things as you would in the hospital. Okay, let's go over a few of the other things that I can do. We'll start okay. with my hand and work our way down. Okay. Okay, so I can be a man or a woman depending on the day, I understand. True. And today I have the hair of a woman and I True. have glasses on. Mm-hmm. Um, my dentures, I can take in or out. Right. And um, I have a tongue also in my mouth. You do. Okay. 
And um, on my neck, we have some carotid pulses. You do? And when you do that, I can see that you have found my pulse. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I, I also have an apical pulse, don't I? Yes, you do. Can you listen to my apical pulse? Yep, I can. And I hear S1, S2. That's great. While you're there, how about you listen to my lung sounds? Okay. Mrs. Oliver has lung sounds in the front, but no lung sounds in the back, just because um, in the simulator, that's where a lot of the um, machinery is that runs the simulator. And so we don't turn the simulator over to listen in the back. We can make our assessment of lung sounds just by listening to the front. So how are my lung sounds? Your lungs are clear this morning, but I know there's other times that I've heard wheezes and crackles and ronchi. Yeah, so we can change up the sounds, mm -hmm. can't we? Right. How about bowel sounds? Do I have bowel sounds also? You do. You have bowel sounds in all four quadrants. Sometimes they're hypoactive, sometimes they're hyperactive, and sometimes they're normal. And this morning I hear normal bowel sounds. But sometimes I might have a bowel obstruction and then I wouldn't have bowel sounds. Is right. that correct? That's correct. Okay, that's great. All right, how about some pulses on my arm? Do I have a brachial pulse? You do. I'm going to take this blood pressure cuff off just for a minute. And your brachial pulse is located here underneath the pulse pad. Okay, and how about a radial pulse? Radial pulse is also here, but I know that if I press too hard, I can actually occlude the pulses, so I just press lightly. Okay, and do I have bilateral femoral pulses? You do. You have bilateral femoral pulses. No pulses over on the arm where the IVs go. That arm is just strictly for IVs. You have both femoral pulses. And do I have bilateral pedal pulses also? Yes, you do. And sometimes checking pedal pulses is a really good way to check and make sure that someone's getting good peripheral perfusion. You do. You have pulses in both feet. Okay, that's great. Now, can you, um, can you put an NG tube in me? Well, we can put an NG tube in you if it goes to suction, but we don't, we don't give uh, tube feedings to the simulators. Okay. Um, how about, could you put a Foley in me? I can. I can put a Foley in you, and if I put a Foley in you, I will actually get urine flow back when the Foley's inserted. Oh, that's, that's great. Let's see. I think that about covers most of the things I do okay. um, pretty well. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, um, I wanted to talk about, you know, I'm a diabetic. And yes, I know that. I need injections. Where are my injection pads? Well, you have injection pads in several places. The injection pad is over here in the IV arm, and that's a soft injection pad. There is a spot over on this arm that appears to be an injection pad, but it's not. It's very firm. You can tell that that's not an injection pad. You also have um, injection pads on this leg, your left leg, in the lateral position. We do not give you any injections into your stomach. All right, that's great. Listen, um, you know, I came in with a little bit of chest pain the other day. You did. How are you feeling this morning? Well, I was doing okay, but it, I have a little bit of pressure in the chest again. Oh, you do. Can you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 for me? I'd say it's like a 4. Mm. And a little shorter breath, too. And your shorter breath, too. Is and the pain, is it like a sharp pain or a pressure? Can you describe it? It's like somebody's sitting on my chest. Oh, and it's just right in the middle? Does it go anyplace else? Mm, not really. Okay. It kind of sits there. Maybe okay. up in my jaw a little. Okay. I'm going to check your uh, medication administration record and see if you have anything ordered for that. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Oliver, it looks like you have some sublingual nitroglycerin ordered. Have you had that before? Yes, they gave that to me before, and I have some at home sometimes. Okay, I'm just going to go and get that ready for you, and I see that your blood pressure is 125 over 82, so I know your blood pressure is okay. Let me get that for you. I'll be right back. Okay, thank you. All right, Mrs. Oliver, I just need to check your identification before I give this to you. Okay. You are Margaret Oliver. Your medical record number matches the administration record that I have here, 122970, and your date of birth is June 9th. Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. I'm just going to put this little pill right underneath your tongue. Okay. 
Okay. Good. Just let that sit there and dissolve for a minute. Are you still feeling short of breath? Well, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, your oxygen saturation is good, but I am going to put you up to three liters per minute just until this chest pain goes away. Okay, I also okay. just um, found out that your blood sugar this morning is 250, and so you need four units of regular insulin for that. So I'm going to go and get your insulin too. Okay, that's okay. Four units of regular insulin. I'll safely recap my needle. Mrs. Oliver, since the last injection was given in your arm over there, I'm going to give this insulin in your leg over here. Okay, that's good. Okay. That nitroglycerin, that helped. Good. Are you still feeling short of breath at all? No, the shortness of breath is better. Okay. And now, the pain's better. I just Okay, I, I need to just check your identification again. Mm -hmm. Margaret Oliver, medical record number 122970, date of birth June 9th. Of course you do that. Guys do that so many times. Again. Well, we have to be very careful. Okay, I'm going to give you this injection down here. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel a little stick. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that was good, thank you. All right, I'm going to drop this right into the sharps box. Excellent. All right, and how are we doing on that pain? Oh, the pain's fine, but now I feel a little dizzy. Oh, you do? Well, let me check your blood pressure again. Sometimes that nitroglycerin makes your blood pressure drop. Yeah, I have some problems with that. Sometimes my blood pressure gets a little low. Does it? Okay, I'm going to check your blood pressure again. And in the meantime, I'm just going to put your head down a little bit since you're not feeling any shortness of breath right now. Okay. okay. Is that comfortable? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Let's just check your blood pressure and see how it is. Oh, your oxygen saturation monitor came off. I can see oh, that yeah, by looking at the monitor. That time. There we go. Now it's back. Okay, your blood pressure is 112 over 76, which is a little bit of a drop, but that's still good. So I'll just leave your bed in this position for a little while. Okay, listen, I'm going to take a little nap right now. Okay. That's fine if you need me. Just hit your call light and I'll be back in a few minutes to check on you, but I need to go and document the medications that I just administered. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Oliver. All right, and thank everyone for attending our orientation video. Have a great day.